Hi guys, in this video I'm going to talk about the cognitive and mood effects of doing keto and intermittent fasting. Um, unfortunately, there's not a lot of studies that are done. I mean, first of all, who's going to sponsor those studies? The drug companies? The food manufacturing companies? No. Um, so there's not a lot of studies. However, there is some extensive studies on epilepsy uh, being improved on the keto. The other problem is that there's no standard keto diet out there. Okay, so um, you have traditional ketosis, which you're using margarine and oil and a lot of unhealthy things, which I don't recommend. Even the CAM programs, Complementary and Alternative Health Funding uh, and NIH, first of all, I know the doctors on the board are not very open to alternative medicine. In fact, they're real skeptical, so you're probably not going to see a lot of grants being uh, authorized to do studies on healthy ketosis. So, and unfortunately, you're probably going to just have to do your own studies on your own body to see if it works for you. Now, if we flip it and look at the studies done with people with high sh blood sugars and high insulin, we can clearly see that doing high carb is not good for the brain, causing dementia. It actually causes atrophy of the brain, shrinkage of your brain. It destroys the part of the brain called hippocampus, so you lose your memory. Um, so we know the, on the opposite extreme that being a diabetic is not good for the brain and your memory and your mood. Now let's say someone has hypoglycemia, low blood sugars. Well, I already know the mood is going to be greatly affected. Irritability, um, anxiety, and definitely sadness and depression. Those are known effects from low blood sugar, and that could be coming from the insulin resistance, okay? Because the body then makes more insulin to shove down that blood sugar, but it could be like borderline. Um, so there's a lot of factors here because there's one thing about the brain. The brain does not store sugar, okay? It doesn't have glycogen, or it doesn't like the liver has a glycogen reserve. The brain doesn't have its own reserve of stored sugar. So it gets its fuel from the blood. So if there's low blood sugar, then the brain suffers. You can get headaches, migraines, and a lot of mood disorders. And I know from personal experience working with thousands of people, when you fix this blood sugar, you see their mood elevates greatly. So I know it's true, um, but of course we don't have the studies yet. So then if you have insulin resistance where the insulin is not connecting to the cell, you're not going to be able to absorb the amino acids that are supposed to be there to build the neurotransmitters. And just that alone, if you're deficient in serotonin or dopamine or GABA, look, look at what that can do to your overall mood and cognitive function. So both the cognitive function, your focus, your memory, your concentration, and your overall emotional state can be greatly affected by your blood sugars. And that's why um, keto is going to help you. And that's why keto can be so powerful because, number one, it stimulates GABA, which is a neurotransmitter. It actually reduces inflammation in the brain and throughout the body. And if you add intermittent fasting in there, you can greatly improve insulin sensitivity, thereby absorbing the amino acids and making the neurotransmitters again. In fact, intermittent fasting will cause your, the regrowing of neurons. You can actually build brain tissue by doing intermittent fasting and reduce the amyloid placking that's involved in dementia. So rather than wait for someone someday to fund research, do your own research on yourself. Try healthy keto intermittent fasting and see how it can affect your cognitive function and your overall mood.